everyone and welcome back to So What If I Sew. Welcome if you're new. My name is Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. So you join me for a sew along. Woo! Um, so this week I went whilst filming this, to be brutally honest, I am so tired. Um, I have got horrifically bad period pains. And so while there were lots of beautiful things in my to-do list, what I actually wanted was something cosy, something soft, and something I can wear to work when I feel like this. This led to um, me purchasing a pattern, getting it printed, and shopping locally for my fabrics. So I actually bought this pattern last month when I felt like this, because in January I went, oh, period pains are terrible, and I need something cosy to wear to work that looks professional, but that I can like wrap myself up in. Um, so I bought this pattern last month and now I'm in the same state and very much ready to make it. So I am of course talking about the True Bias Marlowe sweater, which I got printed from the fold line because uh, I just bought and got it printed from there for the sake of ease. And I, I just love their envelopes, guys. I love them. So if anyone hasn't seen the Marlowe before, there it is. Uh, it's a really nice cardigan. It can be short or long length. Um, and it's kind of just big and cosy. You can make it with stretch and non-stretch fabrics. The only bit that has to be stretch is the binding. And even then it's only 20%. So, you know, you can get away with a knit with a little bit of stretch in it, which is what I'm doing today. Um, and my fabric and buttons were bought in my local fabric shop, a and Textiles, uh, which I've linked below. They don't have a website, they have a Facebook and an Instagram, so I should link them below. Um, and I bought my buttons and my fabric there. So. I'm going to be making a sort of chunky black waffle knit version and I'm going to be making the short version which is this one because as you will see when I stand up I have a long chunky black cardi I love it um but what I need is a short one because a short one will look more professional with what I wear to work so this is my long one um as you can see it's got fun bobbles on it this is not me made but it is homemade by my sister and she crocheted this for me I love it. Isn't it fabulous with all the bobbles all over it? It's great. Um, and I do wear this out as well, but I need something, like I can wear this and look professional and sort of in an artsy way, but I need something that's slightly more, like, well, a bit more cropped apart from anything. Um, and also that's just, I don't know, I fancy something with buttons because this has no buttons. This is more like a sort of throw on and it's open, whereas I'd quite like something with kind of buttons and is a slightly different vibe, but I don't get me wrong. I love this and I always wear it when I'm feeling rubbish at home because it's so huge and cozy. So the fabric I'm using is this black waffle knit. It is the softest thing known to man. So I've got a light next to me in a vain effort to make you hopefully be able to see the black fabric because otherwise it's just sort of all of black. So this is the waffle. It's got a, um, like a smooth side and a, like a more ridged waffly side. And I've got, I think, two metres, possibly a metre and a half of this, which for the short version will be fine. And for my buttons, I have these. So I got to pick these in person and I forgot how much fun button shopping in person is. So this is my button. It's a sort of tortoiseshell, but laid against black. It looks quite dark, but just, you know, lifts it a little bit. So something fun. Um, and they're really, really cute, I think. So I'm looking forward to them. They've got a very slight curve to them. And actually, I don't know which way around I'm going to use them because I think that's the back, I think. I never know with buttons, which is the back or which is the front, or if it actually even matters. But I'm probably going to do it curved side down with the big side up because I quite like it. Um, so for this pattern, I'm going to be making the size four, which because it's an American company. So that equates to a 34 bust, which I'm not, but a 28 waist and a 36 hip. However... The finished garment measurements are a 42 chest, waist and hip for that size. So I think we'll cope. Um, I could go smaller, but I'm not going to. I'd rather make sure I've definitely got enough ease for like boob room and that. Um, so I want to be slouchy, but not too slouchy. That's kind of the aim. And apparently for this, I need, where are we? Um, apparently I need two meters, so hopefully this should be all right. If not, the nice thing about using a local fabric shop is I can pop down and get more. He does still have more. I think, I think I have two meters, possibly. Um, 
I'll figure it out. I'm, I've never actually needed two meters for nothing, um, except the one time I needed like three. Um, so this fabric is honestly, it's so, so soft. And the other thing is this is big and chunky and, you know, it's ideal for like the winter and beginning of spring, really end of autumn, that sort of time. Whereas this is a bit lighter weight. So my hope is I can throw it on in the summer with jeans and like a strappy top and I'll be fine. Uh, but also it's really cozy and should be nice and cozy in the winter. Now, there's one other thing about this project I want to share with you guys, which is you'll have seen last week, I have a new overlocker. And when I put out on Instagram about the Marlowe sweater cardigan, I was like, how long does it take? Everyone said, you know, you could do it in an afternoon, which I'm not going to have time to do this weekend. So it's going to be across the week. But they were like, it's a quick make. But quite a few people said they only use their overlocker, except obviously for the buttonholes. Um, so I thought this would be a great, great chance to get to know my overlocker a bit better. I do have black overlocker thread now. <laughs> Never used to, but I do now. So I'm going to have a go and see if I can sew this on my overlocker. And then just basically anything I'm unsure of, I'll do on my sewing machine. But frankly, right now I have red thread on my sewing machine. So I'd rather do as much as I can on the overlocker because I don't want to re-thread both. It's just a bit of a pain, especially as I really need the red thread on the sewing machine to finish something else at the moment. Sorry, I digress. Anyway, I'm going to try and use as much of my overlocker as possible. Um, so we'll see how that goes really. And I'll give you guys lots of updates. As this is quite a simple make, I'm going to do my best to remember to talk to you guys while I do it. Um, although the overlock is very, very noisy. So I'll try and take steps and show you what I'm doing at each break. Um, and show you what, you know, what I'm using, how it's going and um, generally be a bit chattier. I've been a bit rubbish with sew-alongs recently in terms of remembering to explain a bit more about what I'm doing. Uh, so I will do my best to make sure that in this vlog I answer potential questions and tell you guys basically, you know, what I'm doing, how I'm getting on with it. So if we're ready, let's go. One thing that I thought might be really useful that I'm going to do before I go and get lunch on is let's re-thread my overlocker together because lots of us I know struggle with overlockers where you feel nervous about threading them. Um, so lots of people I know do the tie on method where when your thread's running out, they tie on and they pull it through, which you can do, but they're not that difficult to thread. So I thought it might help if we did it together. Hopefully you enjoy this. So first of all, I have got four black spools over here. I'm going back onto the same four thread stitch. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and find my shears, which should be in this pocket. Hang on, there we go. And I'm going to cut all of my threads. I like to do it from the top because then what you can do is I'm going to turn you around so you can see what I'm doing, but you can just pull them out. Hopefully you can see the vast majority of what I'm about to do. Notably, my power is off because when you're working with it open, it should be. And I have snipped those threads at the top. So I'm just going to pull them through. And, there. and then I'll just pull out there. I just find it easier to do it this way. And then we can just pull it out. There we go. Right. There is now no thread in here take my thread cones off as well and pop them to one side. Pop them up here and I'll sort them out later. So I, when I got this machine, I did thread it from scratch. And as I said in my review last week, this machine is a lot easier to thread in my opinion. So let's have a wee look. Right, I always start with my bottom ones because the top ones are, e uh, like the needles are easier. So I always start here. So here's my black, a spool, 
it's going through the yellow track first so it's going on the end there we go hooked through there and then under the hook at the back keep it in the tension and then we're gonna what i find really helpful is to hold this section of thread at the back and to guide it through nice and firmly into the channel in the middle of the dial we're gonna pull it it's definitely under tension now it's going through this hook at the bottom every overlock will thread differently but hopefully this is useful if you have a singer and then we're just following the yellow dot so as i said in my review you have to like push the thread through and now it's in a nice complete hook loop which is lovely so it does not this is the hook down here it used to come off all the time on my old model right um i will use tweezers in a sec when it gets to the fiddly bit at the top but for now i'll do it with my hands so then we're just following the yellow dials really there we go and next one and then what i'm going to do before i do anything else is put the knife out of the way so i don't cut my hand because that i have nicked my thumb before doing this just because like trying to be speedy but when there's a knife involved you want to be careful so you just get it out of the way and again we're just going to hook it through that needle at the back uh, sorry not that needle that hook there we go lovely now i'm going to move the hand wheel so this I don't know if you can see it this little hook section here if i turn the machine a little bit more you'll be able to see what i'm doing here this little hook section is as visible as it can be and there's a map here so for this model you go around the back and then push it down i'm going to use my tweezers in a sec to get that all the way down to the end but it will click as you can see, threading this is actually getting a fair bit of lint out of my machine. And now I'm going to grab my overlocker tweezers to just thread this through. Now I can thread it by hand. That's not actually difficult. What's difficult is getting it out the other side. So that's actually through the hole there that I need to be through. Now I'm going to grab my tweezers, which are these nice long snippy ones. And we're going to go through to the back helpfully get it caught on the rest of the machine there we go lovely and then out the way there lift the foot up at the back if it's not yet it's lifted very good and then my top tip is to always pull your thread tails right out to the back of the machine um because that way when you start it up it will all get going as it should right next one so again we're going on to the back through the top bit here, going under that hook, taking it through the tension dial onto the hook there. Again, I can tell it's under tension. Then we're going onto this red hook here, onto this one here. And we just follow the dots. It's nice and simple. It can mess up your depth perception a little bit as to where the thread actually is. There it is on and now our next step oh i've got myself caught somehow there we go so then our next step is just to go through this top section here which you can see sat up it's got a little hole so again i'm going to move it so that it's out the way of the needles and again i can thread it with my hands there we go straight through and then I grab my tweezers to pull it through. That nearly always happens because I use quite a long tail. Then I'm just going to take it round and again through to the back. Lovely and easy. So now I can pretty much close this bit, but I'm not going to because my knife is down. So, and actually I'm going to leave it open anyway because it's easy for you guys to see what I'm doing. But at that point, normally I'd pop the knife down and move on to the top. And again, through the top, under the hook at the back, lovely. The needles are a lot easier to thread. So I go straight through this hook here and I go under this one as well. And then through this top channel with the green dot. And then my green, um, yeah, my green pathway goes onto the first thread which you push the thread to the middle and then bring it to the outside. 
and that will take it into this little corkscrew at the top here. And then we're just going to thread it like you would normally thread a needle. Again, I'm going to turn this this way so you might be able to see what I'm doing more, but apart from anything, I can then see what I'm doing. So one of the benefits of having the machine off is that you don't have to worry about anything accidentally happening. You won't hurt your hand or anything. But if your eyesight isn't great or like me, you're using dark thread, I would recommend an additional light just to help you see what you're doing. Now, this is very irritating. So I'm going to chop the end off that thread because it's a little bit frayed and it's just not going through. Then I'm going to lick it. That's what I always do. Uh, it's how I was taught when I was little. I did cross stitching and things. You just lick it and then it will... Right, we're through the back there. And again, I'm going to grab my tweezers. And pull it through. So, last one to do is our final cone onto the back. I hope this is useful. Um, I mean, even if it's not, if you don't have an overlocker, then this might give you an idea. Because a lot of people, it's sort of anecdotally hard to do is... That's how I felt anyway, getting an overlocker. Everyone was like, oh, you know, good luck. But it's it's literally fine. There we go. And then you go through the middle channel again with the blue dot. Follow it down. And that goes into our left needle. So there we go. And we're going to thread that again. I'm going to have a wee look at the end. Yeah, there we go. It's, this black thread is fraying quite badly, even though I've not actually used it yet. Um, so I always snip a tiny bit off the end just to make it easier to work with. So our final one, we're going to thread it through. This, I always struggle because it's on a slightly different level. So overlock and needles are slightly offset. And I find them really hard. Like I find I can do one really easily and then trying to do the other one. Um, I don't know, my depth perception struggles a wee bit. And it's through, so... I'm holding that one in place because it's been a bit of a pain to get in. There we go. And it's a tiny tangle there. There it is. Lovely. And through, under the foot. And away we go. Now, I have got all of my thread tails back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand manipulate my wheel to just double check that a chain is being made. And yes, it is. Excellent. So I always do it by hand first, just to make sure, um, because you can spot if you've made any mistakes. Whereas sometimes when you thread it and maybe you've made a mistake threading it, which is normal, um, and then you turn the machine on, it can make an awful noise or freak you out or something. So, right. That's all as it should be. Let's bring the knife back round. Lovely. Front of the machine closed. And let's turn it on. And here we are. So, we are ready to go. What I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to try a 3, 3 and a 4, 4 to begin with on my fabric. And I do have a test scrap of fabric over here which we're going to have a go with now and see if these settings work. So, already, something wrong there. So let's move our differential feed. With overlockers, the trick is to try and move one thing at once. Okay, that's, that's already much easier. Um, I've used an un uneven bit of fabric there. So let's see, it is stretching. As you can see back here it's all sort of sitting above and that's when my differential feed was set really low from having done a light fabric the other day and then down here we've changed it and it is looking a bit better so let's try a different side so moving the differential feed to one has worked very good uh, the next thing we're going to have a go is altering that stitch length is it? Yeah, let's try a shorter stitch length and see if that works. So it was between three and four. I'm now putting it down to like two and a half and we'll see if that works. So 
So I had a small jam there where the fabric got stuck, but that's okay. Okay, so that's already a lot better. I think it's still a little bit loose. So I'm gonna up the tension. Okay, nice long chain. Let's have another go. Okay, that feels a lot better, a lot more normal. It's still, I would say, a tad loose. So I'm gonna knock the needles up as well to a four. And have one more go. Sorry, um, there is one more test I always do that I just forgot to do on camera there. Um, and once I finish testing my settings, I get two pieces of scrap fabric and join them together. Um, and then I see basically I try and pull them apart and just check the thread is okay. And it is, it's, it's nice and solid. It works well with both layers because remember an overlocker will behave differently on one layer of fabric than it will to two. And for this project, I am going to be doing seams on it. So I just need to make sure. And that seems to be doing the job. So let's get going. So Sunday lunch has been consumed. It is now dark. I am the fullest human known to actual man. Um, so I thought I would do some sewing of something big and cosy. Uh, I've got some filming on tomorrow that's a little bit stressful. So I'm gonna take my mind off it by popping something on the radio. I've got James Bond to listen to at the moment, which I'm enjoying. I've read them all, but it's kind of, it's a very good audiobook series. Like they're, they're really well done, so I'm enjoying that. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna crack on with the Marlowe sweater and see where we are. So I think the first step, like, I mean, it's a, it's a very simple construction at the end of the day. It's a back, a front and some sleeves. So I think I'm just gonna put the back onto the front like do the shoulder seams and just whack it on at the sleeves as I would usually and then I'll look at the instructions and see what I need to do but realistically I can't imagine not needing to do that so yeah making an executive decision let's do the shoulder seams now um it's a one one and a half centimeter seam allowance I believe so I'm gonna work out how to do that on my overlocker and put like a sticker on it I think and then that should help a lot so let's get going this from last time sewing with my overlocker there are adjustments to be made along the way so we have got front back and sleeves attached now as you can see from here it's lovely with the overlocker seams it's really clear it's a grown on sleeve it's very easy it's not obvious where the sleeve goes on so you do I say this you need your notches but I am also saying this as someone who did not cut them because I couldn't be bothered um and also because in my experience cutting notches in waffling and like stretchy sort of knits the notches can fray quite easily and either that or they're really hard to find so I just couldn't be bothered really which you know is on me and I'll cope <laughs> so I just matched it looking at the pattern pieces um so here we are let me pop it sort of over my shoulders so you can see where we are so we've got front cardigan sleeve there we are. So that'd be my sleeve there and the same on this side. So you can already see the sort of line of the cardigan. It's quite nice. It's quite a low V, but it's still cropped. I'm wearing the Closet Claw Mile End um, sweatshirt right now, which is also cropped on me. So it's quite a useful reference. My waist is there. Hips are here. So it's sort of between the two. When it's got a band on, it'll sit just at my hips, which is what I want. And the back is also quite high. So I need to give it a press because you can see the seams. But it's not bad actually, it's quite a nice shape. It's already the shape I hoped it would be, so that's promising. Now, I talked about adjustments. So, earlier I tightened everything up when I was sewing a single layer because I needed it. Whereas this time, 
I found when I was sewing that the machine was skipping a little bit, the stitches were quite tight and um, my second needle kept unthreading itself or this, um, it kept breaking. So I've dropped the tension on my um, inside needle to three and I've brought everything else down to four, four and a half and it's sewing a lot better when it's going through two layers of fabric. So I'm gonna stick with that. But as you can, uh, well, you can't really see because it's on black fabric, but it is actually perfectly bound. There's no extra stitching at the top. It's looking good. Any lumps you can see, by the way, there are fluff kind of poking through. But yeah, the stitches are really neat and they're stretching well with the fabric while still retaining some structural integrity. So I'm really happy with that. Now, there are, so what I've done is I've actually skipped the first step, which wants me to interface things that I couldn't really be bothered. Uh, like just, yeah, I kind of want to get more of a jumper going. So I'm now gonna skip back to that bit. Now I've kind of got a jumper. Um, I'm gonna pop this over the back of the chair. And what we're gonna do is we are going to get our neckline and um, so we've got one for each side for the neck binding and we're going to sew them together on the short edge at the top um earlier i wasn't sure if it was a centimeter or a centimeter and a half seam allowance it's a centimeter and i measured on my overlocker if i line it up with the edge that that gives me a centimeter so that's fine <laughs> nice and easy um so yeah we are going to stitch along the short edge to create one long piece of binding and then we need to put some interfacing on the inside now the one thing i'm slightly concerned about is i don't think this is going to interface well so what i think i'm going to do is base the interfacing in instead possibly because yeah i just i just don't think this is gonna i don't think it'll stick i really don't so i might just stitch it in we'll see um we'll see what i've got but it also might be that yeah, we'll see what I've got. Uh, so yeah, let's let's create our neck binding anyway, and we can go from there. So um, I created the neckband and then basically have decided to interface it when there's a little bit more daylight. But here it is, just long attached at the top. So we're going to pop that over there. Now, the other thing I realised I am able to do at this point is I did my side seam. So I do actually have a cardigan now, which is exciting. So pop my arm in. This is quite a good test actually because I have a massive sweatshirt on. So here we go. I have a cute little cardigan so far, it's quite short at the back, but I don't know, again, that could be the sweatshirt distorting it a wee bit. So I've been reading ahead in the instructions. There's one thing I want to do before I go to bed tonight, and then I will deal with the neck facing, the cuffs, and buttons and buttonholes tomorrow. We can, we can deal with them tomorrow, but tonight I'd quite like to get the waistband on, and I've just... <clears throat> discovered that this is my first time doing true bias patterns and I do not rate their instructions at all um particularly the phrase with right sides touching now it might just be me but if you mean right sides together say right sides together if like I don't know it just right sides together is like a universal sewing phrase whereas with right sides touching I don't know I just so I was reading the waistband section and it's like with right sides touching, stitch the waistband on. And I wasn't sure whether it meant. So it said, yeah, take folded waistband and with right sides together. That's what it said. So well, with right sides touching. Now, my question basically is, I have looked at the jumper I'm wearing to figure this out. If you say with right sides touching when you're talking about something folded, I'm not sure whether it means, here's my waistband, it's really hard to see because it's black, but this is the right side, whether that means folding it right side together, which would be weird, 
or folding it with the right sides out and then this right side against the jumper which is what it means because that's how this waistband's attached as well but I read it and I was just like what like you have to either say in your first line fold your waistbands with wrong sides together and then with right sides together attach this to the cardigan or you have to yeah no, no that's the only way to do it that's the the way to make it clear sorry small rant haven't done this in a while because most people's instructions are all right but that is just really stupid to me that is i think it may need a comma even just to make it clear what is right sides together but it was really unclear so that annoyed me again it might just be me it might just be me over reading it but that's that confused me so if you're like me and you're struggling you fold the waistband wrong sides together and then right sides together with the raw edges facing down you stitch it on and then we can fold it under like that so let's do that together and that'll be the last thing i do tonight and then all i have got to do tomorrow is the neckband for which the instructions are absolutely baffling so that's waiting until i have more brain power uh my cuffs which should be fine again just like these and buttons and buttonholes so it's actually a very quick make when I asked on Instagram how long it took people, the answers varied from don't count the time, uh, projects aren't about that, which is an incredibly unhelpful answer. I get why it's been given, but I was asking to see if I could make it in a day. <laughs> so, you know, if you ever think about giving that answer, just think about why the person's asked is all I would say. Um, or flip side, some people said, took me a couple of hours, it was fine, did it with my overlocker. Um, a couple of people said it was really quick until the buttonholes because they were using massive buttons, as am I. So I think that's going to be interesting. I'm quite nervous about doing the buttonholes on this fabric. So I'm going to have to put, I think, a big heavy duty den denim needle in the machine. And I think that'll work. Um, so yeah, I wasn't really sure how long it would take me. But I think if I'd started early this morning, I could have done it in a day easily, probably a few hours. Uh, using the overlocker does obviously make it a lot quicker because sewing with an overlocker is quicker um just it just moves much faster but yeah I think it's definitely a speedy make and it's the kind of make you could bang out in a day if you desperately needed a cardigan for the evening it's you know it's that sort of thing um yeah so you know just a little sort of halfway um check in with you guys now I'm gonna pop this waistband on and then I'm gonna go to bed So I think I need different needles for the thickness of fabric I'm using here um, because it is just not making it through three layers. Now it is a heavy duty machine so I know it can do it but I do think it probably needs, it does probably need some thicker needles because it's got standard needles and that's three layers of knitwear so it probably needs some thicker ones. Um, so I'm going to have a look at that and see what needle weights I've got that I can use in my overlocker. I should have some extra thick ones somewhere. But it's quite frustrating because obviously it's cutting the fabric. So it's it's making it quite messy in that and it's not good for the overlocker as well. So I'm going to give it a rest tonight and I'm going to come at it with a fresh head, I think, tomorrow. <laughs> last did some sewing together last week um uh, not last week last weekend and now it is friday day of uh, storm eunice um and you'll be seeing this video tomorrow which is exciting uh so it's been this week has felt like it's been about three weeks long <laughs> honestly it's been crazy um so very hectic very busy but thankfully I finally found time to do some sewing which is good um now you will have seen me using my sewing machine which is because for the fiddly bits like the cuffs I'll finish it on my overlocker but I just don't feel as confident yet using my overlocker for like 
tiny little bits like this. And then I did the bottom waistband as well using my sewing machine just again because I had to like stretch part of it, keep part of it flat. And although I am getting better with my overlocker, I did try it on there. It was a lot of fabric. And I don't know if you can see, it was like um, this fabric is really quite difficult to overlock. So I thought I'd just, um, yeah, just pop it through the sewing machine and then I'll finish it off in the overlocker later on. But we've got a cardigan. We've only got one thing left to do, which is the neck binding and the, and the buttonholes. But I'll pop it on top of my existing jumper. Um, excuse me as well if I'm a wee bit croaky. Um, I was ill a couple of weeks ago. I got better. But it seems to have just lingered around on my chest a wee bit. So if I stand up, I'm in my lovely me made pyjamas. Um, so as you can see, it hasn't got this width basically yet. However, otherwise, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a nice length, I think. The sleeves are nice, it's the right line for me, I think it's cute. And I'm looking forward to wearing this a lot, realistically. This is really my style, my vibe. It's the kind of thing as well that once I make it, I know my sisters and my mum are gonna go, oh, can I have one? And we will see how generous I'm feeling. Um, but yeah, I'm really, I'm loving it actually. It's really crazy. I'm so excited to have it done. So I'm still hunting in my stash for some interfacing that sticks to this wool. So worst comes to worst, I have to pop to the fabric shop tomorrow morning and get some sewing interfacing. So we might do that. And I'm quite nervous about the buttonholes on this because I think my buttonhole foot and this fabric are just not gonna get on. Um, so I'm gonna do some research before I go to bed tonight to see what I can do to make it better. But otherwise it's been nice to just do some sewing. Uh, you'll notice on the chair behind me, I've got some, some very colourful fabrics. I don't do Friday sews or anything, you know, I know a lot of people do them. And I'm I'm tempted to start, but just as a fun thing, I have a Sew Yellow Ferendo fabric, which you'll be seeing in a couple of weeks time, but it's satin and beautiful, and it is like the floatiest thing in the world, I love it. I have got this silk. Um, Sorry, no, it's not silk, it's satin. Um, but it's a heavier weight satin than this one, which is for my sisterly slip dress. And I have this amazing chiffon from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn, which is completely see-through. And the plan for this is to make something like the size me sewing VN dress or a wilder gown or something like that. And then make a tiny like mini bodycon dress to go underneath it. And that, cause we've got a couple of weddings to go to next year. So I thought this could be fun. And then I could make other chiffon over dresses and still have the same mini dress. We'll see but I couldn't really resist it. I thought this was fabulous. It's like a um, it's like a Swiss cotton type like texture, but it's chiffon and it is the brightest hot pink in the world. I love it so much. So um, I might try and do this when I do my videos because they are spread out now across the week with the way I sew. So we'll do a little bit of a what's on my chair. Um, why not? Yeah, you know. Um, I have just found, I'm just wearing this now. It's really comfy. So where are we it is literally just interface the neckband pop it on do the buttonholes and we're away i'm really this is the stage i'm really worried about ruining it <laughs> it'll be fine that's the thing if i think about it rationally it'll be absolutely fine but because this fabric is quite challenging to work with just because do you know what it is it's very fluffy and it doesn't really iron <laughs> And it doesn't really press and there's no real way of removing the bulk like the overlocking is the best way I found because it is making seams that would otherwise be I don't know if you can see that this big huge huge great seams it reduces them to tiny little nice bound edges so I am going to have a crack at over I might do it tonight actually we'll see we'll see how brave I'm feeling I'm um, popping this through the machine and hopefully it will go and it will just be a happier cardigan. There is the tiniest, tiniest little bump here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Tiny little bump. But I don't think I care enough. Um, so, you know. I, I think it's, it's black as well. You just you can't really see it. And it's for me, you know. The thing, somebody pointed this out to me recently. I'm in a, I'm in a loquacious mood, so bear with me. Um somebody pointed out to me recently that i don't know why we expect our handmade clothes to be absolutely perfect when a lot of the ready to wear clothes we buy are not perfect and the thing is it's it's fabulous to strive for perfection in the things that we make and like slow sewing and taking your time absolutely but i think 
you can go too far and you can beat yourself up about something that is completely normal. This is a tiny, tiny little bobble. But realistically, it's in a black cardigan. No one can see it and I don't care and it doesn't actually affect the way it is. So I feel like part of me is like, I should care. And then I feel bad for the fact I don't. But the reality is that, yeah, like I was looking at Adam's pyjama top he was wearing the other night and it's stripy. And you know how we all look at like pattern matching? It is the worst pattern matched thing I've ever seen in my life. And that is a professional garment that has been paid for. So it made me feel a lot better about my kind of dodgy pattern matching <laughs> on many occasions. You know, things like that, you have to stop and go, I the standards that are important are my own, not other people's. My clothes are not being judged. They're not in fashion week. You know, this is about how my of what I care about in the clothes I wear and frankly tiny little bobble here you can't see because it's black on black it's fine not worth worrying about so I am I'm feeling brave I'm gonna last thing I do before I go to bed I'm gonna have a crack at overlocking this seam just to finish it off and then I will join you in the daylight tomorrow morning to do the last few bits and then you will be seeing this tomorrow night which is really exciting um it's really nice as well to be back vlogging a bit more regularly i'm i think i found a rhythm now um and yeah i think i found a way that works although next week will be a challenge because i'm at work five days and two of those days i am leaving the house at five o'clock in the morning Woo! <laughs> but we'll see we'll see how that goes so yeah, let's have a crack at that and see how we get on. So, due to some time issues today based around um, some house visits we had from the new owners, etc. Um, I haven't had as much sewing time today as I wanted. However, I have cut out some interfacing for the jumper and we're going to do the last stage now together and I'm still hopeful that I can get this online tonight because I'd like to share it with you guys um this evening it would be nice I'm kind of looking forward to it so um I'm gonna have a crack at putting this interfacing on there and then I'm using the easy method there's two but frankly the the intermediate method I just don't have the brain space for tonight so what we're gonna do is attach this on the sort of inside edges and this is basically for our buttonholes to go through to stiffen it up a wee bit and then we're going to right sides together, close off the end of our lovely long strip, so like that, and basically just um, overlock it together and then we'll pull it through so that it's closed and right side out and then we'll just attach the raw edges together right the way around and we'll have a neck band and then all we have to do is pop the buttons on and do the button holes, which I say only and I'm so stressed about, but um, I'm really, really looking forward to be able to wear this. I'd quite like to wear it tomorrow. Um, so we will see how we go. Let's get on. cardigan last thing to do is transfer the button placement and buttonholes onto here and away we go i'm so nervous because it actually looks like a real cardigan and now i'm really worried i'm gonna screw up the buttonholes uh, but we should be okay so if i pop that there i think that's right looking at the photos of the buttons at the top and then the buttonholes sort of there so i'm gonna pop the buttons on last i think which side do buttons go on for women I want to say the buttons go on the left and the, the holes go on the right, maybe. So if the buttons are here, it would button that way. Does that look right? Or is it this way? No, I think it is buttons. Buttons on the left, buttonholes on the right. 
Does it matter? I don't think it matters. Right, okay, let's just do them this way. So we're gonna pop our buttonholes here on the right, buttons on the left. Right, I'm gonna draw these on and then we're gonna do them with the machine and we'll be done. Um, I am finished. I was also just thinking, I swear I shouldn't be allowed to say the sentence, I'm gonna finish this today, because as soon as I say that, something happens and I never can. But I actually have, woo! Um, so here we are. Uh, so the buttons are not as neat as I would like them to be, because <laughs> this is an issue that I have never encountered, well, because I never really use big buttons. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Would we like to hazard a guess? And what the issue was here. It just, it's just not big enough. So I've had to do my buttonholes manually, which means they were rubbish because I was doing them with black thread on black fabric and it was fluffy fabric and it was impossible to see them. So I think to be fair, they're not like noticeably bad, I think except for the bottom one, which is quite noticeably bad. So I'll do something about that. It's because of the interfacing showing through. Um, but the other two aren't too bad. Like, you know, it's a buttonhole, it functions. It's not, you know, it's not hideous. Um, and yeah, I'm very glad the garment's black, but that has at least allowed me to learn about my sewing machine. So, you know, that is very positive. But other than that, I have a very, very cute cardigan. So I'm gonna quickly try on and show you guys. So we are finished and I'm in love. Look, so I put a white top on so you can actually see it properly. It's a cute length on me. It's comfy, it's slouchy. It's exactly everything I hoped it would be. I think it's quite cute with my hair as well. And I love it. Um, so I love my cuffs as well. They're a nice length. Like, sorry, that's a really useful example. So if I reach up, they stay where they are, but they're not like sliding down. So yeah, like they stay where they are. What I meant by that was they're not too tight, but they're not too loose. The sleeve length is really nice. I like the cropped length on me. I'm definitely gonna make a long version as well, um, cause I've got a really nice like heavy green knit to make a longer one in, but I love this. Um, I just went to show this to Adam and I talked about my buttonhole dilemma and he suggested doing them on the overlocker, which I was like, I can't do that. And then realized that he might be right actually because if I take the knife off, I might be able to overlock the inside. So at least they're bound and like out the way. Um, we'll see, that's Adam in the background. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really chuffed with this. I'm really happy. So I am going to take some photos of this tomorrow in the daylight and then you will see this tomorrow. But oh, I'm so cozy and happy. Um, it's taking everything I've got not to wear this to cook tea, but I don't wanna get anything on it. <laughs> But it's so comfortable. Oh, I love it so much. And do you know what, actually? It's an easy sew, apart from that one bit with the instructions that I struggled with. It's a really quick, easy sew. Um, had I not started it quite late in the day, the first day I started sewing, I could have done this easily in a morning. It's a really quick sew. Uh, I did the majority on my overlocker. Everything that I did on my sewing machine, I then overlocked. So what I will do showing the inside it's black again so it's quite hard to see but hopefully you can see how beautifully neat this is look at it it's so pretty so i am well chuffed with what this looks like at the moment so i'm gonna go take some photos all that remains for me to say is thank you so so much for watching guys i've really enjoyed this one i know it was half setting up my overlocker but whenever i review one I do get lots of questions for that kind of content so hopefully that was useful for you hopefully if you've sewn along that you've enjoyed your marlo cardigan as much as i have and yeah i'm really looking forward to next weekend when tamlin and i will be revealing our slip dresses for february Woo I, I finished my salt water today actually and um, so i'm going to be starting my sicily tomorrow and then panically finishing it this week what can you do eh? <laughs> so Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.